Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. Well, several of you out there have asked me about color. That is such a broad subject. I know that a number of you are struggling with it. And we're going to try to start doing a series of videos dealing with color. Now, the problem is it's a broad subject. You might as well be asking me how to paint. I mean, color in some respects is a very personal choice. You know, I can't tell you what color to make something because that's going to be up to you. On the other hand, there are some principles that apply that help make mixing and all that easier. So today I'm just going to kick off color series with some simple things you can do. First thing you need, if you don't have it, is a color viewer. And that's just simply a window inside of a piece of cardstock, or in this case Bristol, that you can view colors with. You probably have noticed if you go to the paint store to buy paint for your house or your rooms that a lot of them now come with windows. Um, and the reason for that is because you can isolate colors and see them more accurately. Now I just simply use a craft knife and cut these out. And I like to have a slightly larger window and a slightly smaller window. The smaller window obviously just allows you to pinpoint smaller swatches of color. And then your reference material. I just have some photo reference here that I'm using. I'm getting ready to do a painting. Um, and I can use either of these to accurately view a color. When you view a color, especially in a field of other colors, uh, your eye can get biased very easily. So that's what these viewers are good for. You can even hold these up. You know, if you're outside or you're doing a still life from life, you can even hold these up and get a quick idea of what a color, a live color is like on something. But here you can see that blue was not too hard to determine, but, and here's my smaller one. Where I really find these viewers useful are in neutral colors because something that looks gray or, or white Rarely are they purely neutral. If I put that over the white of the cap, um, it has a little bit of a blue cast to it, and it's not pure white. Um, this is almost a tan. That gray's pretty neutral, but it, it's very warm. That doesn't mean I have to match that color, but at least I know the ballpark I'm shooting in. So, color viewers, just Take a few minutes to make yourself one, and it's a great tool. The other thing is, I use in conjunction with these, are strips of watercolor paper that I'm actually going to be using. So if I really am not sure what colors I'm going to use to mix that blue, then I can put that there and actually pull out, and it looks pretty close to a cobalt blue. So I'm just going to see. And yeah, it is, you know, and that's probably close enough. If the light, like where the highlights are hitting due to the sunlight, you know, I may want to brighten that up a little bit with some yellow. And you can just compare your swatches that way. And again, you want to use actual watercolor paper, I think. And you just cut them into small strips. You see in this part of her skirt, which looks blue, is a lot grayer. So I'm going to pull out a Payne's Gray, which has a bluish tint to it. And yeah, Payne's Gray would make a nice base to start painting that color if I wanted to match it exactly. So this is an idea I had to combine the two. Combine a swatch strip and a viewer card. And it's a pretty neat little idea. What I do is cut these pieces of watercolor paper and I just use pad paper out of an arches pad. I cut them into roughly three inch squares. In the craft store, I found this one inch square punch. 
Now you can cut these out by hand, but this just makes your life easier, makes it quicker, and you can produce a bunch of these in just a few minutes. And just like that, I have four. If you want to keep them in a strip, you can just keep it in a strip where all your sample swatching can just be in one place. And just punch yourself some holes along the strip. Now what I can do is find particular colors, and if I want to match those colors, I can do so right on this sort of swatch card slash viewer. And then if I want, I can even label them if you want to get that detailed about it. You know, because you may put this painting away and come back to it, you know, a month later. So make yourself a little swatch card to make note of the colors and you'll know what you did. Another thing you can do if you want to zero in on a color like on this bird wing Let's just get an extra card that you've made and slide it in make the square whatever size you need to so you can see that color swatch very easily then swatch in your color get it the way you want it and label it you know and even if you're not doing this for a particular painting it could be good practice if you would just want to do some color practice or warm up for a painting and say, you know, I want to match that color, or I want to match this color here under the bird's wing. Doesn't this is not necessarily a record keep tedious record keeping thing. It's just something to help you visualize and match color more accurately. And a viewer will help you do that. Whether you do them separately or combine the two, it's just a great tool. So give these little projects a try and have fun with it. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time.